Hello everyone and welcome back to Lewis Fiction and in today's video I bring you Spectacular Spider-Man Season 4 Episode 12. If you have not seen the rest of Season 4 or Season 3 then what are you doing? Go back and watch that before you watch this so you can be all caught up and ready for this episode and of course the finale to Season 4. But without the way, let's get straight into it. Episode 12, Life Choices. Spider-Man swings across the city. Fires burn, but the chaos is no longer. How could he let such things happen? He perches on the side of a building. The fight is over, right? Or is it only just beginning? He thinks back to everything that has happened throughout his school year. Things don't add up. Captain Stacy was onto something earlier on in the year before his passing, but he can't quite figure it out yet. There is an internal struggle blinding his every move, but before he could focus on anything Peter Parker related, there are much bigger matters to be thinking about. Peter swoops down and saves a family from a burning building. And before Spider-Man can leave, he hears them distress. Where can they go? Where are they going to stay? They have a two and a four year old child. How are they gonna keep them warm? Spider-Man thinks to himself, he can't just leave them there, especially as the guilt of this whole situation partially rides on himself. He says he knows a place that they can stay. We cut to the villains at Hamhead's HQ. Mark Allen starts to become curious as to who the new big man is. Hammerhead says he's not allowed to tell anyone under any circumstances. Mark questions this, and Hammerhead becomes impatient, saying that the big man wants to remain anonymous, and anonymous he will remain. Hammerhead rallies all the villains and says that it's time. He states that they have enough firepower to take down Spider-Man, and their mission is to stop him. The big man has a feud with him, and the only way he can make it back onto the scene is with Spider-Man out of the picture. Hammerhead will tell everyone to scout and find him, and when someone does, to report back. As everyone leaves, we will follow Martin Lee out of the building as he looks rather sorrowful. At this portion of the episode, we will flash back to Martin Lee's past, exploring some of his backstory. As he walks home, we will get flashes of his life, his family, and how happy he was with his wife and his six-year-old daughter. During this flashback sequence, we will also see how Martin Lee created Feast. We will see him take out a loan from none other than Norman Osborn, indicating that this was a few years ago. Osborn will lend Lee the money he needs to create Feast. Through seeing how much he cares for his daughter and due to how much of a family man Martin is, we really understand his goodwill to open up Feast so he can help people. However, Martin struggles to repay Norman. The Feast centers don't bring in much money and Martin is in debt. We get a scene of Martin and Norman arguing in his office at Osborne Mansion. After this slight disagreement, Martin leaves, but he bumps into someone on their way into the office. The man looks back to reveal none other than Hammerhead. It is revealed that this scene took place just before the ending of Season 1, Episode 4, just prior to when Hammerhead approached Norman about creating supervillains to keep Spider-Man distracted from Tombstone's criminal empire. Martin's feud with Norman happened around the same time as Season 1. A few weeks go by and Lee still can't pay off Norman, and one night, him and his family go missing. We go on to reveal that Martin was a part of one of Norman's questionable experiments, to begin before we get the likes of the Sandman or the Rhino. Norman tested on him to try and create a magic-like super being to take down Spider-Man in aid of Tombstone's criminal empire, as we mentioned before. Since Lee couldn't repay the debt that he owed Norman, Norman decided to take matters of repayment into his own hands. However, the experiment goes wrong. Lee burst out with anger, dispersing a massive amount of energy. His family, who were also in captivity, die in the process. Lee grovels over the ones he lost, as Osborne evacuates. And instead of trying to hunt, fight, or even kill Norman Osborn, Lee goes into hiding, afraid of what Norman could do to him next. Which is why we haven't seen Martin Lee or Mr. Negative throughout seasons 2, 3, or 4 up until now. It wasn't until Norman Osborn had died at the end of Season 2 that Martin Lee came out from hiding, taking back Feast and running it for the people who need it once again. However, underneath the kind man is a rageful, bitter, and darker side, his negative side, in which to make ends meet and to keep Feast on the ground, uses it to commit crimes and do Hammerhead's bidding. Lee had met Hammerhead almost a year ago now, and Hammerhead recruited him back to be a part of the big man's revival into New York. Even though Lee doesn't really know who he's working for, he has to, so he can make the money it takes to sustain Feast. 
Thus, we end a crucial flashback sequence, explaining and expanding upon Martin Lee's character that has been hinted throughout the season so far. Lee returns to his home and decides he wants to visit Feast to see how everyone is getting on. When he arrives, Spider-Man also arrives as well. Spider-Man escorts a family into the center, who have two children, one a two-year-old and one a four-year-old. Lee thinks back to what Hammerhead said, and he knows that he must inform him and the other villains as to Spider-Man's whereabouts. But he thinks back to his daughter who he lost. He wouldn't want someone else's child to get caught up in this destruction chaos the same way his did. Lee doesn't know what to do. Aunt May, who is running a shift at Feast during this time, approaches Lee and sees he's quite stunned. Lee asks how long Spider-Man has been here. May says that he's been bringing people in all day. May realizes Lee is really out of it, almost like he's not listening. She asks him if he's okay, and Lee says that he just needs a minute. He goes up to his office and lies down. He looks out of his blinds. He can see Spider-Man making sure everyone's okay. Hammerhead comes over his com, asking if he's found anything. Lee gulps and doesn't respond. Hammerhead shouts his name, asking again. Lee says no, very hesitantly. Hammerhead tells him to keep looking. Spider-Man leaves the building as Lee takes a massive sigh of relief. We cut to the next day as we follow MJ at Midtown High. She notices Peter isn't there. She starts to worry. The last time that she saw him was just before the breakout at Riker's Island. He is nowhere to be seen. The register is called in class and Peter doesn't answer. His seat is also empty. The teacher looks quite concerned as well, as finals are just right around the corner too. So Peter should be attending class as a top priority. We follow MJ throughout the day and once again, Peter is nowhere to be seen. She starts to worry even more. She calls Aunt May, asking if she's seen Peter. She says that she hasn't. She's been working overtime at Feast recently and hasn't had time to go home. She says that Spider-Man has been coming in and out all night with people looking for a place to stay, so she's had to work overtime. MJ eases slightly and says that hopefully she finds him and hopes he's okay. May, slightly worried as to her nephew's whereabouts, asks MJ to call her if she sees him. MJ agrees and puts down the phone, at ease, knowing that Peter is just doing Spider-Man stuff. Spider-Man swings through the city as we cut to him. The sun sets for another day. Peter hasn't slept in over 24 hours, trying to clean up the mess that he made. He feels like he's hallucinating. He rubs his eyes when his spider sense wakes him up as it's going crazy. But Peter is too lethargic to react in time as the scorpion tackles him from behind. He says that he's finally found him. Peter thinks to himself that this is the last thing he needs right now. Spider-Man fights the scorpion back and a battle ensues that captures the attention of the public around them. When the scorpion gets a minute, he radios into the other villains, saying that he's found him. Peter says, great, there's more of you guys? Scorpion smirks and carries on battling Spider-Man as the others arrive one by one. A few moments pass before Spider-Man lies on the ground, injured in front of five villains before him. Scorpion, Sandman, Molten Man, Mr. Negative, and Shocker. Tired, hurt, down, even in the face of defeat, Spider-Man says, there's only five of you? You guys can't even get the memo right. And with that, Spider-Man's quips are halted as the sixth member of the team joins them, walking through the middle to meet Spider-Man's eyes. It's Captain Stacy. Spider-Man freaks out as his eyes widen. He can't believe it. Captain Stacy says it's time for his end. What life choices had led Peter Parker to this moment? And how will he get himself out of this mess? That is it for episode 12 of the Spectacular Spider-Man season 4. If you are enjoying this series, make sure to leave a like on this video. Episode 13 is coming next week on Sunday, 7pm UK time. You ain't gonna want to miss it. It is also a 15 minute episode or around 15 minutes. So it's a long episode. It should be the longest of the entire series so far. There is a lot to draw out. There is a lot to cover and you guys ain't gonna want to miss it. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll catch you guys all in the next video. Take care and peace.